All right, let's talk about some mistakes that are going to destroy the punch in your mixes. The first one I'm gonna talk about is using limiters, or I guess I should say misusing limiters, especially when they impact your drums. A limiter is gonna help you get things a lot louder, but it does that by turning down the peaks. And it's really easy just to show you visually what happens when you use a limiter. So we've got a stereo drum track here. See, it's got nice, big, spiky transients. Sounds punchy. Now, if we go ahead and process this with a limiter, and I'll just go ahead and render it so you can visually see what's happening. Very obvious, right? Just takes those nice, big transients that we had, rounds them off, flattens them out. And of course, this isn't just a visual thing either. Let me show you what it does across an entire mix. Let's throw the limiter on the mix bus. So now I've engaged this limiter and I've made it about the same perceived volume while doing a few dB of gain reduction on the limiter and listen to the snare, especially how much punch and attack is lost. Here it is out and in. So when you're using a limiter, you've got to know that it's going to round off your transients, push them down and make them sound softer. Now, sometimes that's actually exactly what you want. Sometimes I'll, I'll be mixing a tambourine and it's just way too spiky and it kind of hurts your ears. And so I'll purposely use a limiter there to soften and round off the transients. But if you're doing that on drums or even on the mix bus and it's touching the drum peaks, well then you're definitely sacrificing some punch and impact in your drums. The second mistake that's gonna mess up your punch, and this is a huge one, is that the performances aren't tight enough. So way before using compression or transient design or any other plugin, the tightness of the performances is actually what determines how hard it's gonna hit. You need your drums and your bass, guitars, sometimes even your vocals, all hitting nicely together. And again, I can give you a quick visual demonstration here. So here's two straight up DI guitar tracks. Okay, so they're played very tightly there. Now, if I just bounce this down, you look at the resulting waveform, we've got some nice transients intact here. You can see the start of the strums, we get a nice little spike and then it dies off. It's pretty clean, right? Now, if I make these just a little bit off, let's move that 20 milliseconds one way, 10 milliseconds another way. Now let's bounce that down as well. Now look at that. The transient on the front end is rounded off. It's lower. Let me compare directly here. Okay, look at this strum. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Nice hard hits there. Now look what happens when it's a little off. Look at this note over here. You can see we have a big transient when it's nice and tight. Then when it's off just a little bit, it's completely gone. And this is what's happening when your performances are sloppy. And we can hear the difference as well. So listen to this little section with the guitar and bass just a little bit off and not cleaned up at all with any editing. Now here it is, played tighter, cleaned up. I'll give you one more quick AB on that. Now listen to how much tighter those chugs sound, especially now. Having tighter guitar and bass actually makes the drums hit harder. And this is probably the number one thing that most people need to work on in their recordings. If they just had tighter tracks, tighter performances, then their mix would automatically sound 10 times better. All right, the next mistake destroying your punch is related to the performance, but it goes back even further to the arrangement. So I'm gonna play you two different examples here. Here's the first one. See if you can point out what's wrong. I'm gonna play the second half. Okay, so this is a common mistake. There's just way too much going on. We have a bass pattern that's going dun 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 but the drums, the kick, is not matching that at all. 
And then we have like a droney guitar going, just kind of holding throughout the whole section. And then there's another guitar riff that's a lot busier. Listen to this again. Essentially, you have like four tracks all playing in a different rhythm. Now in contrast, listen to this. Here's an example of a good arrangement. You hear how the bass, the drums, and guitars, they're all hitting on the same rhythm. Da, 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 ga, da, da, da. Even the vocals when they come in, check this out. Even the vocals just double that up. Da, 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 da. Everything is really hitting together. And this is key. And all the compression moves that you make, all the little mix uh, decisions that help emphasize the punch and the transients in your recordings, it's just gonna be emphasized that much more when your arrangement is good and it's not too busy and everything is actually hitting together. And having lots of different layers can be cool, but you just gotta know that the more layers you add and the more variety of instruments you have playing, you are gonna sacrifice that punch and clarity. And an extreme example of this is if you think of an orchestra, right? You've got percussion, brass, woodwinds, strings. I mean, it can be really cool and sound amazing, but punchy is not exactly the word that comes to mind. So if your song doesn't sound punchy, maybe you just need to simplify and take some stuff out of the arrangement. The fourth mistake that's gonna make your mix less punchy is having too much gain on the guitars. This was a total game changer when I figured this out. So check this out, listen to this example. Pretty nice, punchy, tight, heavy sounding breakdown. Now listen to what happens when I crank up the gain on these guitars. Now in solo, these guitars don't sound bad like that. You'd think that's a heavy tone, but again, in context of the mix, I'll compare it first, the high gain version. Now with less gain. So you can hear what's happening there. The, the more gain you have, it's obviously squishing the dynamics and it just kind of flattens it and makes it sound all squishy and you don't have that nice energetic attack of the pick on the string anymore. So there's less definition, less dynamics, and plus the more gain you have, it's just adding more and more harmonics to the frequency spectrum, just taking up more and more space in your mix, which means it's harder for other elements to cut through. So I found that as a general rule when recording distorted guitars like this, you wanna have less gain than you think, almost almost sounding a little too clean. Definitely less gain than most guys would have playing live. And I think you're gonna find that you get a lot more definition and punch and clarity out of your guitars. The final mistake messing up the punch in your mixes is having a weak mid-range. And what I mean by that is overemphasizing and boosting too much of the extreme lows and the extreme highs. So let me show you what that sounds like. So let's grab 60 on a shelf and do a nice little boost here. And then let's go up around 12K and we'll boost there as well. Okay, and then let's compare that to just having a really small broad boost in the mid range, right at 700 Hertz. Okay, listen to that. Okay, I'm gonna AB both of these EQs and try to listen to which one punches more. When we boost the mid-range, the, the drums and the guitars, they come right up in your face. And I'm gonna tell you, that is the part of the mix that is gonna translate everywhere, whether you're in the car or earbuds or any type of speakers someone's listening on, that's the part that's gonna come through. And so you need those mid-range frequencies hitting hard. But what happens is a lot of people scoop out their guitars and their bass, sometimes even the vocals, way too much, especially if they're mixing in solo a lot. So they'll do something like this on the drums. They'll think that that sounds muddy, scoop it out. And then by the time you do that same thing on your bass and your guitars, and then on your vocals as well, well then you actually end up losing 
a lot of punch. And speaking of mixing in solo and scooping out the mids, those are two of the 17 newbie mixing mistakes I talk about in this video. So go ahead, check it out. It's gonna make your mixes better. Music